back right where we stopped. Hello guys, good day to you all. Um, this is my from Kiddies Dread, and here is with the continuation of the spaceship game. This is the third video, so if you're just seeing this video, you can go back and watch the other videos. You can check out our page, you can see the other two videos before this one. Alright, let's get right into it. Now that we've designed, we've successfully designed the behavior of the rocket ship and the rocks, now let's design the measles that will be coming out from the rocket ship or bullets, whichever one you may prefer it as. It's, it should be measles anyways. Okay, so um, to do that, let's go and get a sprite that could look close to something like that. Um, I would have chosen a broom, but maybe we should just go with this button. Yes, you're probably wondering how does this button fit into anything that looks like a measle. Right, don't worry. Um, we'll make it look like it in a bit. So, uh, so let's go quickly to the costumes and let's redesign this. Okay, uh, uh, first of we want to uh, select the whole thing. Now, I want to select everything. Be careful now. Notice what we're selecting now. If I drag this out, you see exactly that it is two. It was the way it was designed. So there's one in and there's one outside. So if I want to select all of them, just do this. Oops. Make the size became 600. Anyways, look at this. Uh, now that I've selected all, um, all of them, I've selected all of them. So. I could reduce the size and reducing the size here does not affect the size here right okay you could just reduce the size or I could leave it as it was and decide to reduce the size here okay so what I want to do is maybe I could cut it off or maybe I could just resize it right reshape it so have both of them to touch uh, see that so I have to do the same thing to this guy here Oops. You really want to be careful when you're when you're um, adjusting these inside you go same as for you all right so for now I could say that I'm pretty much done with mine just a little bit more okay so really I could say I'm done with the bullets no we'll have to waste much time and i don't need this costume so i could just delete it okay so back to my code quickly let's start so i'm gonna just come over to the events and bring out a new when green flag is clicked block and of course the size is humongous so i'll just change that to hmm let's start with 20. If I click on the green flag, what does 20 look like? Not bad. Right, so this is this is close to what I want to see. Uh, maybe 15. Is 20 fine? Okay, let's maybe I'll just leave it at 20. Let's just leave it at 20. Okay. So and for a, for it to be really a missile, it's supposed to always come out from the rocket ship, right? Always come out from the rocket ship. So for we want it to always go to the rocket ship. To do that, let's bring out a forever block. Um, forever control. Now, what we're going to do here is forever go to well done position. Nope. Go to rocket ship. So forever go to rocket ship that means 
look at it, it's right here. So it is always going to be at the rocket ship. Now if I move the rocket ship, see, it's always going to be moving with me. It's going to be moving with me all the time, okay? So that's beautiful. Now if I press stop, it's still there with me. Next thing I want to do is, it's facing this direction. If I want to know the direction it's facing, if you click on, look right here, you see that you have direction 90, right? So I could change that. I could change that to pointing upward. Well, instead, what I would do is, you could point in direction 90, right? So, once you've done point in direction 90, once I do this, so if I click on the green flag. Oh, I said 90, 0. I meant to say 0 because 90 is pointing rightwards. This is 90, so point in direction 0. Okay, so now it's pointing upward. And every time I move, it's moving around with me. But it's not really fun that I am seeing it, right? I don't want to see it. I'm not supposed to be seeing it. So, I could just make it go behind. So, with the looks, you can just say send to back layer, something like that. Send to back layer is just going to make it move backward. So, it can go, go backwards one layer. Or Or instead, I could just say go to back layer, let me delete this block and go to back layer. So once I click on the green flag, see, it's right behind it. You can still see it tipping out at the bottom though. However, don't worry, that one is going to be hiding. So we can get the hide block there and put it right here too. So now we have everything there. Of course, why is it hiding? Remember what we did with the rocks, right? The rocks were clones of course the bullets are also going to be clones and anytime they touch the rocks they will be deleted so let's do that now when i start as a clone of course but before we start as a clone we need to tell it when the clones are going to be created so forever go to rocket ship then create a clone of myself how often should it create a clone of itself uh, let's find um, control create clone of myself Okay, now how often should you create a clone of yourself? You see this is going to actually be a problem because remember what I said last time in the rocket ship about Putting this kind of blocks together because when it goes to the rocket ship Okay, let me show you if you put a control uh, wait one second there for how often bullets should be created So look at this if I click on the green flag and move around now Okay, we can't see it because it's hiding, but the uh, the bullet is being sh is, it will be showing somewhere. See now, the bullet could show up at any time, and the bullet could be left behind when the rocket ship is moving, and then that is not going to be fun, especially if your bullets are not moving as fast as you want it to. So you may want to create this, put this create clone in a different forever block of his own and a one green flag click don't worry it's going to work the exact same way so we probably want to make 0 0.5 seconds so every 0 0.5 seconds or 0 0.3 seconds 0 0.3 seconds a new bullet will be created all right we can always adjust that. So when we start as a clone, what happens? When the clone, when I start as a clone, what happens? Um, we want it to show and then change Y by 10, right? The first thing we're going to do is make it show. So let's do that. Okay, look at it, it's still there, now it's showing. change y by 10 that is going to be in the forever block of course now let's get to forever block 
change y by 10. Now there are two, there's another blocking control that we could have used. Uh, where is it? Let's get change y by 10 first. And that's going to be, if you look at that, it's working already. Uh, let's change y by 5. Okay, so I have that. See, now see, see what is happening to the original one there. Can you see it? There's one being left behind. Now, which one is this one? Oh, well, that's probably the one that was created first. Okay, good. All right, so our blocks are just our bullets are just stacking up at the top, and they're working already. Okay, so let's stop this. Uh, if you want to redesign your bullet, it's fine. I feel like it's a bit too big. Okay. So, um, that aside, let us now see what happens anytime the bullet touches the rocks. So, you could say, repeat until, instead of using forever here, we could have said, um, repeat until touching edge or touching rocks, right? That is, it's going to keep um, going, it's going to keep, it's going to keep changing Y by five that's the bullet until it touches it but since this is the method we've been using all through let's just go through with it let's bring out if then so we're gonna say if touching the same way we did for the rock if the rock was touching the line we're gonna say if touching the uh if touching the what's it called if touching the rocks so for the rocks we're gonna say um if touching the rocks yes for the rocks, we're going to say, uh, if touching the rocks, maybe increase the score by one somewhere. Uh, but we also want to do it such that if it touches the edge here, if it touches the edge here, right? And if it touches the edge, it gets, it gets to disappear. So we're just going to go over to the operators so that we can say if touching this or that. So if touching the rocks or the line at the top, something happens. So if touching rocks so we're going to bring out two if touching blocks okay just uh okay yeah, one so we can move this to the right now since the other ones are here and if touching good so if touching rocks and if touching edge delete the clone right delete the clone and get that here Delete this clone. Easy. So now let's let's try it out. Why is it not deleting the clone? Oh, of course. The the we've not said what is going to happen to the rocks, but that is we know now that it is actually touching the rocks and it's touching the edge, so it's getting deleted the moment it touches the edge of the rocks. Now let's stop there let's quickly go over to the rocks now and we're going to say for the rocks if touching bullets uh let's change the score by one somewhere let's change the score okay so but so let's go over to the rocks quickly now i'm on the rocks right so this is what i just did i just switched back from here so we still have all our code for the rocks here now what we're going to do on the rocks we're going to say um we could we decide to put an if touching inside this one for the clone but should we put it here because of this change y by 2 is going to affect how fast it happens so i don't want to make it i don't want to have that one disturbed so i'll just bring out another when i start as a clone block not when green flag click remember when green flag click block is only going to work on the original sprite the clone is what is falling so when i start as a clone again forever Forever, when I, when I start the clone, uh, forever. Mm. If then, now the if then is what we want to use the if then for this time around is if touching the bullet, right? If touching the bullet, so if it's still called button two. We're going to change that name. So we're going to say if touching 
if touching if touching the bullet touching button 2 which is the bullet of course so if touching button 2 uh, first of all let's go and create variables now variables are things that change okay variables are things that can change and in this case we want our variable to represent a score so let's create a new variable call it score all right okay okay so look at that i already have score here score now now, now that i have that score it's going to say if touching button 2 let's quickly change that name let's click on this button to right here we're going to change the name here to um measles measles yeah okay so back to the rocks i've touching this one i'm going to say change look at this change my variable by one just click on this one and change it to score and drag it out so we have changed score by one then after that, it has changed the score by one immediately it deletes immediately it's going to we're going to make it delete the clone so we're going to come here to and delete this clone and let's test it okay see deleted move move okay so that is working Okay. Now, of course, you can adjust the speed of your bullet at any point if you want to. If you want to do that, just come to the missile, right? Drag this back here, and maybe uh, no, don't reduce how much things have been put there. I just change Y by maybe two. That's going to be slower. Let's change Y by ten. Changing web by 10, I will encourage us to change the size, reduce the size to 10. Two. So, okay, so look at that. Okay, now it seems like the bullets are too small to destroy the, the bullets are too small to destroy the, uh, the rocks. Well, not exactly. It's because it's moving by 10, so it's, it is keeping is keeping some steps so better to leave it at five now let's test it out once again it should be touching them now beautiful all right so if you're considering them as too small i can just change the size to 15 okay now, beautiful so now that we, we have that way we already have our sprite running smoothly Okay, so, so far we've been able to make uh, uh, a score. Now, quickly, let's do something. Because we created a score, but remember we wanted, wanted to have two players, right? So, let, we could easily just say, um, let's go and rename this variable, this score. Right click on score, let's rename it. Now, we're going to call it um, P1 score, representing player 1, of course player one score now, of course so that we can uh we can make player two uh have player two score okay now let's quickly do one more thing what happens when we when it touches this rocket ship now for that part which is going to be the finale and where we make uh the, the second player's sprite that will be a grand finale for that and more videos on scratch and other programming i love you guys to so like and subscribe wait on for the last video of this game all right until then please stay safe everyone bye bye